That is a naughty girl on the table. I should apologize, but I won't. I like her. No, I'm not talking about the challenge coin. She's pretty racy too. No, I will not move it closer to the camera. You got a good view right here. I like her too. <laughs> yeah, old school challenge coin. I like that. Sorry, I do. I'm conventional. I'm old school. Always will be. No, I'm talking about the P61 Black Widow on the table. The terror of the night skies in the Pacific theater for the Japanese during World War II. She's a naughty girl. Naughty. Don't believe me? Check out the nose art. Oh my goodness, is this a fantastic aviation collectible. The nose art says, can you make it out? Lady of the Dark. Can you see that? I think it's a beautiful blonde with her back arched. You got a squadron insignia there and it says Lady of the Dark. So this is probably made after an actual P61 they found a photograph of. That's what they usually do with these models. So this is not made up, I don't think. So probably an actual night fighter in the Pacific War. That's where the P61 Black Widow made its money. You know, not in daylight, you know, fighter, air warfare, not so much, but as a night fighter, it did a lot of great work. It was highly feared by the Japanese with good reason. That is a beautiful model, matte black, red highlights on the nacelles and the, uh, the prop hubs. <sighs> yeah, lady of the dark, she's a naughty girl. Thought you might like that. That's a TMP prop for this KRV. Thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks for being part of TMP Patreon or whatever, or whatever other or whatever other TMP sustainment website I use in the future. Appreciate you guys. Here we go with another CRKT product. It is recommended. It is pretty excellent. This is the Slacker. Yeah, I pretty much like it. Love it. Mm, I don't know if I love it. There are a couple drawbacks I'll talk about, but like it for sure. Recommend buying it for sure, even in its current form. I think it's a pretty squared away blade. Now in this KRV, I'm not gonna take it down, not gonna discuss the takedown feature that a lot of these folding CRKT blades have. The field strip technology, I like it, I think it's cool. I don't think it adds a lot of weight. It's a cool thing, I like it. Uh, but suffice it to say, the CRKT slacker has it. What I'm gonna concentrate on is the blade itself. First up, only 2.6 ounces. 2.6 ounces. Yes, I am elated. <laughs> it is rare I bring a knife this size from a major manufacturer that meets that weight criteria. Yes, I still am a weight snob. Golf clap, please, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I have been preaching about it for so long in all types of reviews, tactical nylon, knives, guns, optics. Uh, we've made some progress over the last 13 years, haven't we? We have, I think some manufacturers have made some great strides in making lighter weight gear. Uh, and when we started TMP, I was really on the bandwagon for soldier gear because the wars were going full fledged. Uh, I still have a lot of soldiers that watch, I have a lot of military that watches, a lot of law enforcement that watches. And those loadouts, if we can get them down, it saves their backs, it saves their knees, it saves their joints, they're carrying a lot of other crap. You might be the same way depending on your system and who you are. So yeah, rant complete, thanks for listening, golf clap. Yeah, lightweight is key. 2.6 ounces on the Ken Onion Design CRKT Slacker, I love that. Uh, one reason is we don't have any stupid steel liners in this. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. And actually, look, it's freaking milled out. The 6061 alum aluminum handle. <laughs> they even milled the aluminum handle out. Uh, I don't know if Ken Onion just said to do that, but whoever decided, fantastic. This is a Taiwanese produced blade. I think it has really high quality levels from what I'm seeing. We're gonna go to the blade first. Uh, kind of a Warncliffe presentation. I don't know if that's my favorite. Actually, I know it is not my favorite for EDC. Uh, it's just a lot of tip wear that will go on here. I'd much rather have something that has, you know, some belly to it, some up curve to it. And here's another CRKT product. I'll put links to all these to Blade HQ below. 
support them, support TMP if you want, buy it where you want, I don't care. But if you use my links, you're supporting the show and it motivates me to do more. See, this has an upsweep to it. That's a lot better for most EDC tasks. But here comes a but, you ready? The but is this. I think this would be an outstanding food preparation knife because it's kind of a mini chopping knife without Warncliffe. There is some belly here. There's a little bit of up, up sweep, real dramatically dropped tip here. I think it'd do great chopping onions, vegetables, fruit, peeling an apple would be fantastic. And yes, I do use my knives for that. Mm -hmm. You should eat the peel, nothing. Have you ever scraped off the wax on the apples you buy in the store? Yeah, do that and tell me if you still want to eat it because it'll come off brown to black or dark gray because there's so much filth in it. Rant complete, another golf clap, here we go. Yay, yay for peeling apples. Perfect knife for that, I would say. Uh, it's really sharp out of box, the CRKT Slacker. I really am impressed with the edge. Steel, maybe a little bit less so. It's 4116, kind of a Victorinox Swiss Army knife steel, a little bit soft, high rust resistance, easy to sharpen, get a nice edge with it. It works. I, I would not say, hey, don't buy a CRKT Slacker because it has 4116. I wouldn't say that. That's it. For the price, I'd say, yeah, doable. Doable. Should they have used a different steel? Here's the thing about offshore produced blades, though. They don't have access to, like, uh, without more importation costs to all the steel. So you can say, well, I want S30. Well, you're going to up the price on this substantially, and I don't even know if the manufacturer in Taiwan could ever get that. There's politics involved, supply chains involved. That's why you see certain manufacturers, like the European manufacturer sticking with one steel, usually it's N690. Which, by the way, reminds me a lot of 4116. N690, high rust resistance, not super hard. It's good enough. So don't sweat that it's 4116. Guys who may show up, oh, 4116, I never do that. I hear what you're saying, but I don't use this for heavy cutting anyhow. I use what I advocated to you for years. My Sheffield plastic knife with a high carbide blade in it. <laughs> there you go. Bimetal blade in it. These are awesome. And yeah, I painted this. Look how cool that is. Isn't that, I, I mean, that's just wear and tear in my pockets, y'all. So I did like a white undercoat and then I did fluorescent orange and then gloss clear. It's just sick. 1.2 ounces, y'all. 1.2 ounces. So here's, this is my point. I'm just doing this, breaking this out gratuitously. But I'm not gonna like break down a cardboard box with this. I think that's dumb. When you have something like this, I'll do it with this because it takes time to sharpen. I don't have a ton of time. I'm completely maxed out all the time doing the show and my work. It's just a lot. Yeah, so there you go. You should do the same thing. By the way, I'm seeing some of you guys adopt that and congratulations to you. And here comes a golf clap for you. The jimping on the top is okay. It's weirdly placed. It's like way down the blade, so you gotta come uh, you know, up here. It's more aesthetic than anything. That's a 2.7 millimeter tapered, and it is flat ground. I forgot to mention that. Blade on the slacker. Nice sharp tip for digging out stuff. Yeah, the jimping's eh, not great. It, that's a downside. They should have real jimping on pretty much every knife. I know. I can't get everything. We have an aluminum backspacer here. This is your takedown wheel for the field strip technology. Oftentimes when you when you put this knife back together, I will mention this, is that sometimes you want to put it in a mid position to slide this, this locking handle back down. Sometimes it could be a challenge on certain CRKTs. I did take this slacker down, but I forgot if it was harder to put back together. You've got like Teflon washers in there. Let's check the speed on this. Flipper design, let me move uh, Naughty Girl out of the way so I don't bust her. That's a heavy little plane, by the way. That die cast, it's heavy. Yeah, I'm still left-handed because I'm still healing and will be for quite some time on the shoulder. Not great deployment there. I'd say speed is good. It's not like fantastic, but it's a field strip knife. So it's not IKBS or anything like that. You might put that in the mix if that's important to you. Here's the clip, deep carry, blackened. Little bit of intrusion with the screws into the clip area. Nothing obnoxious though. Non-reversible, that's kind of weird. I mean, so you're stuck with a clip. Thankfully, it carries tip up. That is total perfection, I like that. Again, aluminum handle, 6061, gray coated. 
Uh, kind of some sharp transitions, but in hand, uh, I think it's fine. Yeah, it's a super light, super carryable EDC knife. It buries nicely in the pocket. And with a field strip, you're not gonna have a lanyard hole in that if you care. Here's your centering on this captured liner lock. Detent check with a naughty girl watching. The naughty girls, plural. Let me see if I can shake it out off camera. Nope, that detent's there. Uh, may, that might be one reason it's not like flying out because it has kind of a strong detent on it. Capture liner lock so you don't have to worry about hyper extending it. Uh, it's a good knife. It's a good knife. Uh, again, I'm not going to say I'm totally in love with it. I'm not. But uh, for what it is, I really like it. Competitive options. Well, you've got the crossbones on the top. I don't have a lot ready for you. Uh, I don't know if this is like a direct competitive option, but I sure love this, the Boker FR. There you go. So that's also a captured liner lock, G10. This is a mass drop version, mass drop coloration. I'll put the link below. That drop comes active frequently. So if you just sign up for the drop using my code, it'll save you 10 bucks if you're new to mass drop. I know, they call it drop now, so I don't know why they changed. I love this knife. It is fantastic. And let me see what I have here in Santa's grab bag for competitive options. If you guys saw how many knives I had here, you would freak your cone. I've been showing this one lately and I sure love this knife. This is also a CRKT product. It's a stainless steel handled, the Remedy. <laughs> it ain't nearly as light as the Slacker, but man, it sure is cool looking. It's got great jimping on it. This has IKBS, so it comes out really fast. Let's do a little size comparison with this one. Yeah, which one would I carry for EDC? Hmm. Well, you guys got to remember that I carry three blades minimum. Actually four. I'll carry my pocket knife, the utility cutter you saw, the Sheffield. I'll carry a tactical blade, and I'll carry a, a, a smaller EDC blade. It's been that way for well over 13 years here in TMP. Forever. So if you're saying for an EDC blade, which of these on the table would I carry? Um, I'm gonna be honest, I'd carry the FR. Especially this one, this is an S35, the drop one. It's got like some, uh, you know, well, here you go. I use this as a food prep knife, so it's probably got some whatever, uh, apple juice or whatever I use it for. I don't clean my blades very often anymore for the camera. <laughs> I used to be super anal about it. Uh, other competitive option, let me see. Something that would be close to the price point. Oh, dude, I love this knife. Kershaw Atmos. This is gonna be a lot less expensive. 4037, I really like this knife. The Atmos is really cool. And it's gonna be this, actually it's lighter than this one. So this is, this is gonna be, I think this is like 1.8 ounces or two ounces, something great carry clip. And I know a lot of TMPers bought the Atmos and they love it. And uh, for good reason. That's 8CR 13 steel, and it's really nice up sweep, really nice blade, hollow ground, a little bit different in, it, in its uh, cutting ability. If I'm gonna food prep, I'd much rather use a slacker than that, or that one, because this has more reach. I can you know, do a span of the vegetable, like if I'm chopping carrots or something. There we go. Wrapping it up, short KRV, only 13 minutes. What's gotten into you, nothing fancy? I'm cranking through the product, bro. That's what's gotten into me. Make sure you sub, make sure you stay in my donation service. Right now it's Patreon, who knows where it's going to be in the future. It keeps me motivated. If I get a few bucks thrown my way for all this work, it keeps me motivated. I'm just saying, use my links, enjoy the blades. Good job on this one. I like the CRKT Slacker, it's legit, out.